Hey everybody, and welcome back to another devlog for Mod Mask, a VR action game that I'm solo developing. I'm going to be doing something totally different for this devlog. As you can probably tell already from the opening of this video, as well as the timestamp before even clicking the video, this is going to be the longest video I ever posted to date. It's been over two months now since I last posted a devlog, but I have not stopped working on the game. As you could expect, that means there's so much more to cover now. I have mainly been focusing on recreating level 1 of the game, which was prototyped all the way back in Devlog 2, so feel free to check it out after this video if you have not done so already. That being said, I am focusing on taking level design to the next level, so this video is largely going to be an unedited tour of the level in its current state. I'm going to give a presentation style walkthrough of the level, showing off the thought process of the level design, as well as bugs where bugs exist, and leave plenty of room for feedback. Of course, the level is unfinished. I still want to leave room for you all to have something to look forward to when the game does release. I'll have timestamps below so you can skip around to key parts of the video if you would like. But before we get to the guided tour, I want to give some thank yous to those who have already given some feedback. First off, shout out to the person who told me about the double sided texture rendering for the helmet model. This looks so much better than my old solution of closing off the bottom of the helmet, so I'm very thankful for that tip. Also, shout out to the person who tried dissing me with the Emerald AI comment. I actually didn't even know what Emerald AI was, but basically is an out of the box AI asset that makes setting up new enemies and animations much easier. Even though this was intended to be a diss comment, I'm still thankful as that brought awareness of this asset to me, and so I ended up purchasing it and integrating it into the game. I'm really not trying to have any kind of revolutionary AI in this game, so I think this will do the job nicely. I also confirmed I could edit the source code and already made some tweaks to it, so I think this is the right path to go down. And because it is easier to integrate more enemies, I did just that. I added three new enemies to the roster, this zombie enemy, the giant berserker beast thing, and spiders. I still need to reskin and decorate the zombie and berserker, but the lore behind them will be that one of the reasons mod masters are illegal is because not everyone can handle their power. Some get completely overtaken by them and lose all control. This can result in becoming in a zombified state if their bodies can't handle it. If their bodies can handle it, they evolve into the berserker state. Spiders are, well, just spiders. But as I got deeper into creating these new enemy types, I realized I can only tweak their behavior so much. It's hard to know exactly the spaces these AI will need to navigate in without actually having those spaces created. As such, I thought it was time to make a serious first attempt at properly making a level with Pro Builder, paying serious attention to the level geometry, design, and textures. And without any further ado, here's a guided tour of the level I have been working on. Again, any feedback in the comments will be very much appreciated. Alright, so let's begin a tour of the first level of the game. So this would be the parking lot of the distribution center. So we start with the enemy here. Right now the AI is still not that good. So we'll just get that out of the way real quick. Okay, so the important thing here is these alien guys, you know, they gotta go to work. They gotta go work at the distribution center because the materials that we're mining out of the mine to ship out to make mod mass, they ain't gonna move themselves. So they gotta come to work. And so this is the beginning of the game. You land at the distribution center. Yeah, we're going to destroy this place. We're going to blow it up. So, of course, they got to get to work. So this would be the parking lot. Now, of course, this level is unfinished for sure. Um, I have a couple models of spaceships that I think will work. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. You know, a little better than low poly, I think. Um, but, you know, these are just a couple models without any textures. The only difference here is I actually kind of like this model here. Um, uh, obviously, it's the same as those couple. But I really like this model here, except it's not UV Unwrapped, the free model that I got. Uh, this one is, but the artwork here is does not look like it fits the game. So I'm definitely going to have to go into Photoshop and retouch this one up. So I will think I'll go with this one. I left this in here just because it looks a little better than these than these grayed out models. But so that's something still to do. So that's gonna be the alien ships. That's how they get to work. As you saw earlier, the alien was walking up away from the door. I think it'd be kind of fun to have one of these ships have the um have the cockpit open. And then maybe, you know, that's where that's where the alien was walking to. So maybe if you hop in there, I don't know, maybe you're going to find something that is a little fun. Um, just a little other things in this area here. Um, obviously, it's just a little it's just a little circle starting area. Nothing fancy. But one of the things is the top roof here. I always think it's fun if 
you know, you try to award the player for coming up with just, um, just creative ways of trying to get to places that they probably shouldn't be. So, you know, something like that, running up, running up the side here, doing these jumps that feels like you probably shouldn't be able to do. You get up to here and then find out, oh, you know, there's a secret. So, you know, definitely keep an eye out on that in this area. But we can even expand on that, too, even further. So we go into the door. Now, of course, here's the entrance area to the distribution center. There's a little sign. This is just a free texture that I found online. Uh... I do think it'd be cool to expand upon this. And um, what I found out recently is the Legend of Zelda series. They have um, actually created their own hieroglyphic alphabets. And everything in those games, when it's in hieroglyph hieroglyphics, they correspond to actual letters. So you can spell real things. So I think it'd be cool to like take one of those libraries and change this up and say like mod mask on the wall. Instead of, I have no idea what this says. I just think it kind of looks cool. But, you know... It all depends on time, really, how much time I want to spend on the detail of that. But, you know, when you walk in, if we go over here, you see this is the cafeteria. Like I said, this is a workplace. You know, these guys got to eat. There's a couple out there over there walking around roaming. You know, we're going to go in and destroy this place, but they're they're going about their day. So, you know, besides just having the sword and I can default go in and just, like, mess them up, I want to give the player some options. You know, you can you can go in with the firepower and, and mess them up there. Or right now I have an ice power here. Um, I don't think this one will be in this area. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But to iterate on the firepower here, I think it'd be cool where if we if you take the mask and you know equip your firepower and we go back out here, that if you find out that the secret up here if let's say we go up here real quick and let's say the secret here was encased in like a block of ice and so not only do you have to find out that it's up here by going up this uh you know janky way of getting up here of platforming your way up here but then oh wait you also have to use the fire mask, and one of the things I don't have implemented with these masks yet is that they're going to be on timers. So think about like Mario 64 getting those power-up hats. You have like 30 seconds to use the mask before it goes away and you're stuck with just using the sword again. So you'd have to then navigate this in 30 seconds and unlock the secret. So I definitely want to play with, I want to do a bunch of secrets and stuff like that, environmental stuff with plays on the mask and stuff. So not, So the mask will have some some elements with the secrets and collectibles in the game but also just fun ways to go about fighting these guys now um you know i'm not afraid to showcase some bugs so i found that with the new emerald ai if the, the enemies don't see me so like right now they don't they don't know i'm there they're just going about their business watch this if i kill him if i aim he goes right through the floor only when they don't notice me so if we go over here and I actually get their attention. Hey guys. What up? See, then they ragdoll and everything's fine there. Um, being a VR game, I do like I do want the props to be interactable, so all these tables and chairs they all have they all have their uh colliders and you can just go about destroying stuff. So what I was saying back about this ice mask here, I think I might change this one out. Like the fire one could probably stay because I like the potential for the puzzle out there. Uh, but this ice mask, I'm thinking about maybe changing this into some kind of like bomb type of thing where you can toss a bomb and you can just see all this furniture go flying everywhere and just absolute chaos in this area. Um, the wall textures... This was just some free texture I found online. I kind of like it. I'm probably going to do some little cleanup here in, in Photoshop and maybe get rid of that danger and like this arrow, these arrows. I don't think we need all of that here. So I might do some touch up on that. But all around, I like it. Um, I'm using some ambient lighting right now. So as you can see with the sword, it's kind of not looking the way it should be. I got to mess with that a bit. But all around, yeah, I would definitely like some feedback on the aesthetics here. You know, I got the ceiling lights up there. 
um, some textures for the pillars, even the um, the table and chairs. You know, they're just made of metal. So I don't know if this looks too, cr you know, if this looks good or just not that good. Um, I I guess the important thing with the chairs is I do have the hit boxes, so um, it's all totally custom to the chair and completely fits in all the in all the holes of the chair. Um, might do some more stuff with props up here. Like this is where the employees can go to get some food to, you know, go to the chairs and sit down and eat. So, you know, this is just kind of like a counter. So, um, if we go down here, there'll be shelves of stuff and maybe someone working here to like, I don't know, maybe I need to reduce the height of it cause I'm standing right now and maybe I'm just short, but maybe it could come down a bit. Maybe not. Either way, definitely might want to look through here for some Heelys or, you know, some collectibles. We'll see. We'll see what I end up putting in here. These, I'm going to put some doors in here, so you have to open this up. Maybe one's going to be locked. Who knows? Might need some code to open it up. So, after the cafeteria area, we can go in here into this hallway. Oh, my God. There's a guy. Yeah. Okay, so we got some texture changing. You know, we're going away from the Doom Bible and there's no elevation of of the floor, floor plane here. We're just immediately going into a new texture. Um, I, tr I messed with the elevation of the floor and then, you know, my character kind of gets stuck on it and it, it felt a little unnatural, at least in this area. I do do it a little bit later, but we'll get to that. So we got this tile floor. Um, I thought it was a decent texture for the context of this. And of course, the hallway, not only is there a combat scenario with the enemy, I do want to make sure that they spawn a little farther back in the actual game instead of right at the door. Uh, because that would be too easy to get the jump. I do want to have the player to be pulled in this direction. But not only do I have that, but this is an option to do some like checkpoint loading or unloading of um, you know the previous areas because we really don't need the that parking lot area in the memory anymore of the game. So we go over here, we have a locker room. We have a couple guys being dumb over here. Again, the... What is this going on? Sweet. I don't know what that happened here. Nice. Um. Don't need anything too crazy here. This is the locker room. What's a VR game without lockers that you can open up and explore? Um, again, Healy's collectibles, maybe? Who knows what you can find here? Oh, wait. Maybe if we keep looking through all the lockers, we'll see. Well, that's... I gotta fix the placement of that so the locker stays closed. But you can imagine here that open up the locker and you're looking like, Oh, wow, a mask? That's not on one of the things that regenerates them. Like, this is like a one-time use mask. And if you've been watching the devlog series, you'll see that this is a mask color that has not been seen before in this devlog series. This one's brand new. This is the double jump. So, again, we can even go, we can even go back with, like, taking this mask. Um, I shouldn't have put it on yet. Actually, I'll show you in just a second here. Even up here at the top, I still have to work on some of the opacity of the outside of the area. But you can imagine that, like, because this is a VR game and I can hold stuff, that you can take the mask out here and wait to put it on to trigger that 30 seconds. And then, you know, you have a double jump, which maybe could then make it easier to get up this wall. And maybe other areas of the game based on, you know, future secrets and level design. So that's, a, you know, double jump. I think that's a fun thing to do. And see, now we're floating down. So we got a little bit of, got a little bit of stuff to iron out there. Like, a lot of stuff to iron out here. And reload that level. Hell yeah. Okay, we'll run through some stuff, get that back there. Yeah. Uh, do a little more like real time walkthrough right now. Oh, sweet, a mass. Go through, we'll just destroy these guys. He can go through the floor. 
we don't care right now. It should actually be probably an easy fix, to be honest. Once we look into it. Okay, go through the floor. Get back into the locker room. Mess this guy up with the sword. What up, dude? Dude, he's like... Okay. Like, let's take this back. This is nice for the next area coming up. So we got another, this is what I call the windy hallway. A couple more guys here. Again, the new AI system. Got a lot of tweaking to do, but I want to tweak it into these spaces. I want to know what spaces I'm working in to actually give them the behavior versus just a wide open, empty area where everything works there. Okay, so now we get through that door. And this is this is the bread and butter of the level. This is the distribution center. And this is where these aliens are coming to work. This is their day job. Um, we still have more props to go here, but definitely would like some feedback on the aesthetics here. You know, over here I have these metal wall textures or metal plating textures, and I do have them scaled totally oversized. But you know what? I kind of like it. I don't mind it. Um, we only have so much power to work with on the Quest 2, so... I'm not trying to get too detailed with 4K textures or anything. I kind of want things to be a little somewhat animated. Um, and I don't know. I kind of like the style of it. Um, let me know your feedback. It clearly, I've already had um, some some feedback on posts I made that they took that people can get the impression this is some industrialized area. Definitely critiquing that there is a winding staircase without any rails and a. <laughs> In an industrial area, you know, this is definitely against code. This is not safe by any means. Someone could definitely just, like, fall off the edge. Keep an eye on the corner. Who knows? Maybe something will be there. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. Um, I don't want anything too big because, you know, I, I experimented with different sizes of this. The original pro prototype was probably twice this size. And I just noticed that it was a pain to walk across all the way. Um, especially if you're someone more prone to... Uh, VR motion sickness like this is probably gonna be more of an advanced movement game. I'm just so used to it now So I'm sprinting all the time, but you know other players might be taking it slower And you know we have some more work to do here. We have some walls. We have some uh, Some holes in this wall that would probably cut out um, some tables and chairs some minecarts full of like gems and stuff to decorate this place up um, Because you know these are minecarts that are being sent back from the mine with materials that we're going to ship off to the factory to make mod masks. So this is a distribution center of not mod masks, but the t materials to make the mod masks. So, you know, there'll be, probably be holes in this wall to send the shipments out the door to get them packed up, packed up and shipped. Um, and then, you know, over here, is some managerial like office areas, you know, we'll probably put some computer desks and stuff, some more enemies. Well, you know, we're going to flesh this place out a little more, not like too crazy. I still want to keep the somewhat minimalistic and like animated, type of vibe here but um you know of course right now if you bring the double jump power you can get into some places that you probably can't you know there's no ladder up here so you know 30 seconds you get this mask from the locker 30 seconds come up here maybe you get in some places that you don't know you're supposed to be but there's some windows up here so you might get a hint that there is some stuff up here you can see it not sure how to get it you know a little more exploration and trial and error playing around you know it's just some puzzles out here with the mass powers um, and then of course the ladders, um, my ladder design choice is this type of pool ladder thing. I saw some mentions of this on a forum where, um, you know, instead of having the game auto bring me up to solve the ladder problem, I do have the, um, the top hooks coming a bit farther. This was actually uh, originated from a candy cane model I got online, and I went into Blender and touched it up to make that. And it works pretty well. Um, these windows I should probably lower for my own height. If you're taller, you probably have no problem looking out this window. I, uh, on the other hand, am shorter than I thought, or I just totally measured wrong. Or I just totally measured wrong here. So, you know, I want these windows mainly so you can see them secrets. To see, uh, you know, where to go. But also, one of the things in this area, let's, um, 
Let's go this way first. These doors, you know, maybe they'll be cut off until, you know, until you do some certain scripted events. And then maybe the door will open. Um, there is some weird bug here with the hand on the ladder. Sometimes it gets stretched out like that. Not the biggest deal. Um, but I do want to look into that for sure. At least give that a fair attempt. Now, there are... I did go with the elevation thing here. But instead of making the player jump, I do have a hidden collider here to help. So you just walk up here and it just does it for you. So you don't get stuck on it. I'm not sure if that's a great idea or not. Um, again, I can drop like the sword here and it just kind of like floats there. Um, but we'll see. I don't know if that, um, if that ease of use of this ring is better than the immersion breaking of the sword just hanging there. Or, you know, I can lower this bridge, of course, and make it flush with the bottom here. So, we'll see about that. Any feedback, you know, comments, that's what it's about. And, yeah, you know, I can place some enemies here, like maybe some fireball enemies that can, you know, shoot out um, at you as you navigate this place. Um, so, one of the things in this area, and a common th theme in the game, so, you're going to be going from... You know, the mission that you're being sent on is to just, you know, the main, the creation of the mod mass is completely illegal. So we're here to go to this planet and to destroy their supply chain operation. So here's the distribution center. So we're sent here to destroy this. And then we're going to get into the mines. We're going to move to, so then we're going to travel to the mines where, you know, they have the operation to get the materials to make the masks. And then we're going to go to the factory where they're assembling and building the mass. And we're going to just destroy all of it. So that way it just destroys their operation. They can't, um, they can't continue, you know, make it harder for them to continue the operation. That's what the mission's all about. So in this area, I kind of want to have some things where, um, you know, we have to go plant charges. You know, one, one of those missions where you plant the charges, maybe plant one here, maybe on the, um, you know, on the support beam in the office area, you know, in the corners. Maybe plant like five charges here. So that way when we leave here, we can just blow it up. Um, and then, you know, that way the player is forced to go and navigate and explore all these areas here. You know, they have to climb the ladder. Uh, they have to, you know, come up to this catwalk and make sure they don't fall off. Hopefully they're not too afraid of heights. But it, it ain't that high. But, you know, who knows? It's, it's VR. Pe you know, people get super immersed into it. That's what it's all about. Nothing too crazy. This is just level one. This would be a small version of it, I would say. Um, this whole level one, I feel like, is a mix of just kind of like linear um, progression through the environments and focusing on combat and, you know, getting collectibles and secrets. And then this is a little more of an open area where you're set to explore this somewhat sandboxy open area and, you know, plant all the charges. There'll probably be like arrows that says, yeah, you can go here, 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 and then... You know, in like our little like watch thing, we can say like, oh, you have to like, you know, what's the current objective? Plant the charges. Do something like that. And then later, um, so then, you know, level two, if you look to the previous devlogs, is the cave area. Which I kind of like that layout for the most part. I would say I have to redo that level to some of the, our new um, building standards with Pro Builder. Um, I've gotten pretty, pretty fond of it. And, you know, work on better textures and UVs and all of that. Um, so we'll work on that as the next level of the cave. And then after the cave, we'll bring it into the mines, which would probably be a bigger uh, area kind of like this. Where it's more focused on being open and exploration based and you have to go plant the charges. Um, but that one will be a, a bigger version of this and a little harder to um, to navigate and find everything. And so once you do all that, you plant all the charges, then it's time to escape. We'll power up this guy here, probably in the towers or something. You know, there'll be something. It's like, yeah, we got to power this up, and we're going to escape via the minecart. Because, you know, this minecart, if we go on the other side here, woo, that double jump is high. If we go over here, so we send the minecarts down. We send in the empty minecarts down to the mines. They fill up the minecarts with like the gems and the materials, whatever's used to build the mod masks. And then they send them back up here 
uh, full. Again, you know, once we know what those crystals look like, we can have a couple mon carts out here filled with like those crystals. I'm thinking maybe like a purple crystal or something. So we'll have them all here, and that's when the materials get distributed out. So because this rail connects to the mine all the way down there, that's how we know we. Um, well, that's kind of why we chose to go to the distribution center first. Let's destroy this the small, easy thing. Pick out the low, or you know, pick off the low hanging fruit. And destroy up this place. Now, as you can see here, there's absolutely nothing. The tracks run into nothing. I'm just kind of doing some. Uh, I just have it placing this button a little bit of loading unloading. So if we look over there where that door is, you'll see that when I press this button, the minecart will start moving. We got to jump and get into that. But the second half of the level will load into memory while the other half loads out. Uh, but of course, you know, we'll probably have like some like sliding doors here that um, we'll have some sliding doors here that will um, raise up and, you know, to hide the fact that this part of the level is loading into memory so go ahead and do that see now some levels and the mine cart is in and i actually have it like blocked off even um so the player can't get out of it but you know this is an opportunity where um our little ai guy on the ui can be talking if you looked at the previous uh, devlogs or trailer you'll see that um we can get some narration in there and then it'll be saying stuff like, all right, you know, it's time for this area to blow up. And then we're going to go down this like little roller coaster and then, boosh, you know, big explosion going on. And, you know, oh, God. Definitely something that I need to do. Oh, my God. So definitely disoriented. I have to work on that spinning. Going. Oh, my God. Hell yeah. Dude, that's like a Halo 2 super jump. I'm, this is disorienting, this is nauseating, we're gonna reload this. Ah! Speedrun, speedrun, speedrun. And that's a big thing about this game, like, I want, um, I do want there to be, like, this, like, speedrunning, um, element to it. That's what I like about the masks and all this kind of, like, a bit jank um physics interaction you know some of it i'm gonna try to clean up for sure well not try i am gonna clean it up but um you know i do like the speed running community a lot i don't really take active um participation in it but i like that i i love the idea of people just like completely destroying and breaking the game so you know Probably something in this game, I'll post, like, my best times, you know, the developer's best records of these courses, and then I'm sure people will find ways to use these mask powers um, in just creative ways, especially how you can pick up the mask and delay putting it on. So you can probably bring a mask all the way across the map to a place that um, I wasn't expecting and hopefully break the game. I think that'd be cool. But stuff like this, if you see those mountains off in the distance, you know, they're drawing in and out i do not like that so either we'll have to fix that or put some fog in or something here's the roller coaster section this is probably the most um aggressive thing i'm doing because you can see the frame rate drops on pc so i'm definitely gonna have to iron that out for sure if i want to get in the main quest store um but hey, i don't know how nauseating that is so definitely let me know in the comments if you were about to throw up on that now as you see this is zombie valley as a, um as I'll probably say before in the video, um, that these are like old mask users where the mask just did not, it did not work out for them. You know, they had the mask on and they tried to get the power of the mask, but it totally corrupted them. Like they couldn't handle it. They basically turned into zombies. So, you know, I have the double jump mask there that we, that we found in like a secret. But if you didn't find that secret, here's your double jump mask. So there's just a valley of them. And one of the things is, so yeah, you can go in with the sword normally without a mask. Maybe, um, well, the firepower is probably going to be expired by now. Um, you can double jump, which would be a lot of fun in this area. This area is pretty open. Or this yellow mask. I decided to rework the yellow mask. So instead of using lightning, I kind of, I decided to change it to be like a lightning speed. You know, like the flash. So, this mask will actually double your walking and your sprint speed. 
right now. You know, maybe we'll change those values later. We'll, we'll see. But, you know, you can go through this valley. I thought it'd be fun just to move, like, Super Saiyan fast. And just go in and just, like, destroy a bunch of these, um, these zombies, which, like, will die in, like, one hit. I think it's a ton of fun to just go through. Or, you know, then you can also have, like, the double jump as well. You know, we'll get those with some speed. And then another thing is, like, you know, maybe take the double jump mask, which, you know, if the mask only have 30 seconds, you know, maybe we can take the mask and run it over here. And just, like, with the speed running tip. So, here, I do need to put a door here. I don't want you to be able to get in right away into this area but you know maybe you can double jump over to the top you know i gotta mess with the values of the double jump to you know make it work um you know i don't want to get stuck in ceilings but maybe do something where we get over that where we can get onto that bridge so yeah see i can do it um with a little sprint sprint jump so then just like speed running scene there's just an another way to get through faster. Because probably, like, the actual way to get through is maybe you go over here. There's some boxes to climb. But, you know, you could technically get there a little faster if you go this way and pull off that maneuver. Something fun. Um, over here, I definitely want to build in a door kind of like before. Actually, do I even have a collider in here? I do. Um, you know, because the rail tracks go into the mountain. You know, this mountain's discolored. This is where the goods are. This This is where the materials can be found that make the mod mess and you know of course in earlier in the um in the devlog series we have that cave level so that's where this will lead into and then after the cave will be deep enough into the cave we'll actually find the mine where they can get the materials so you know the door will probably be shut and then you'll have to go into this area here where there'll just be more um whoops we'll go into this area here with all the stairs, there will be some bad guys um, that I didn't put in yet. And then, you know, maybe we have to hit some buttons and stuff. Um, maybe there will be, like, I'm thinking, like, four buttons that are red and you hit them. They turn green. You make them all green and the door opens. So, kind of just a little area here to run around, fight the guys. Um, maybe there will be, like, a door. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll carve some doors out of in these areas for, like, the under section. Because these are the same towers that are from before. I just closed them off so you don't have the ladders. Um, and then maybe there'll be like a key element where it's like you can get like two or three of them, no problem. But the uh, the last button is inside one of the towers. You need the key. The key is like up there or something, and you can get that. Um, and then of course, you know this is, of course, a remake of the first level from the Devlog series. That was like the snow area in the mountain, um, definitely fleshed out. A bit more. Again, I kind of want to do something like this. Kind of upgrade to level 2. And who knows, maybe this will be the last upgrade. Maybe there will be more work that goes on to the core of this level. But this is essentially just kind of like a sketch. Um, more of a detailed sketch, I would say, of the level. And I still have to do scripting events. And, you know, properly get the enemies to work. More enemy placements, collectibles, all that jazz. Um, but, of course... To stay true to the devlog series, you know, there's, you see here, uh oh, there's like an area back here, you know, what's going on here, um, on the side, and we go into this little hidden area, and of course, you know, there we have it, our Stonehenge from before, so a little secret area here, you know, we already got one of those secrets in place, uh, you know, gotta do some programming here, what actually we do here is there's gonna be just something here in the middle, like, do you walk into it, who knows, but we'll figure out something to do there. So yeah, that is everything I've been working on for the past two months, really. Um, let me know your thoughts down in the comments of what you think of this level. Does it seem long enough? Does it seem like there's enough variety in gameplay? Um, obviously, you know, with the AI, the bugs and stuff, I'm trying to make that completely obvious so you can see the state of the game and where it is. Um so you can get realistic expectation of like when this might actually be coming out. Um, still a lot of work to do. Um, but with this state of this level where it is, although I have more work to do, I kind of want to just move on to like the next level, either working on the cave or, you know, maybe skipping the mine or even farther. I had originally had an idea of nine levels for the game, you know, one tutorial 
one tutorial and nine levels. Uh, I might descope to six. Uh, to, this took, you know, about a month to make this, and there's still a lot more detailing to go and more uh, just programming to do. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see where that takes us. And, you know, again, I kind of maybe want to make like six of these levels um, to start out with and see where um, that ultimately takes us. Uh, if that takes a long time to make finish making the six levels, then, you know, I might stop at six and start detailing them. So I can always release more levels and updates or like DLC expansions, stuff like that. And same with more mask po mask powers. Like, I don't know how many I want to make um, total. Um, you know, projectile masks. Um, these like passive masks where you just put them on and you get the powers. The passive ones are much easier. Um, but I do have other projectile and other like functionality ones I still want to do as well, or at least experiment with. I think 15 masks would be a good number, but, you know, maybe some will be cosmetic or just for fun. Um, we will, you know, like, and by cosmetic, I mean, like, um, you know, you pull out your sword and it's like it's just a different weapon, like a special weapon or something. I don't know. Um, or maybe not even cosmetic. Maybe the weapon just is actually functionally different. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where this takes us. But, yeah, definitely let me know in the comments of what you think of everything you saw. Up until this point, um, again, I don't want to try to hide too many bugs or anything like that um, because, you know, there's still work to do. Um, but, yeah, definitely let me know, and thank you, and I'll see you next time. For those of you still watching, I just want to do a quick channel update and give some more information about the game. I'm going to throw in some headset trailer b-roll footage in the background because why not at this point? First off, I still plan on doing another tech test for this game. However, I completely went off the rails the past two months and headed in a completely different direction in terms of focusing more on level design. Basically, I haven't really made any progress on the items I want to have done for another tech demo. So at this point, I don't think an early 2023 tech demo is going to happen. There will still be a demo eventually, but just not within the next few months. Definitely be subscribed to the channel and follow other socials in the description to stay informed. The biggest driving factor for changing my workflow plans is my wife and I are going to have our first child this summer. So one of the things you can expect around that time is six weeks of no YouTube videos from me. Maybe I'll be able to film some in advance ahead of time. Maybe I'll post some shorts. Who knows? Ideally, I feel like if I do have any extra time here or there, I'll spend it on game development. But again, family first, so I'm really not planning on making any progress on any of this stuff. For me, the creative aspect of level design is the hardest part of making a game. And so it takes more mental energy from me. So I'm trying to push as deep into this as possible before the baby is born, so that afterwards I can focus more on bugs, cleanup, optimization, etc. I'd like to have a solid foundation in place. I'll probably make one or two more of these devlogs before taking that six week break. Let me know down in the comments if you like this style of video, or if you prefer the more heavily edited ones. I'm really looking for feedback here mostly as it's been extremely helpful. So I wanted to try to get this long form unedited style out to see how it goes. Thank you all for still watching even up until this point. That support means everything to me. I hope you have also been enjoying the weekly VR related videos as well as I attempt to grow this channel, which has been growing steadily by the way. Again, always feel free to leave feedback on what you like and don't like. I'm always looking to improve. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.